Well, welcome on in. And we are going to talk about a transit that I am finally finishing up. Thank God, Black Moon Lilith transiting my fourth house. Wow. Um, this is really private, right? When we talk about fourth house, I'm going to try to be very sensitive to the people in my private life and not give too much information while at the same time giving you enough to relate to me and to really understand what this transit looks like because coming into it, you know, I studied and I'm be frank with you, I did not give it the weight it deserved. If you just go off of textbook definition of this transit, <sighs> I've learned, you know, there's a thing of, of studying astrology and, and knowing the astrology, and then there's a thing of living the astrology. So by the way, um, I'm not going to be a doing a series on this, okay, like Black Moon Lilith Transits to World of Houses. I'm not going to do it uh, because there's plenty of stuff like that available, and I feel spirit-led to start just commenting on my experience of living the astrology, living transits after I've gone through it. And then you get a whole nother, right? Because I'm telling you, textbook is very like, you know, black and white. It's almost like looking at architects' blueprints, whereas living it, it's like feeling it in living color. And so um, let me also say that after you hear my story, my experience with this transit, um, if you've not if you're not, if you've not gone through it and you're coming up on one, I mean I don't want to scare you. It might have been a little bit more difficult for me because I had a malefic in the opposite house, which is tenth house, and a malefic is Saturn in my case, but it could also be Mars or Pluto, and that made this transit exceptionally challenging. Okay, so you want to pay attention to what's going on in that tenth house. And I am going to be talking about more about that Saturn transit in my 10th house when I come out of it. I'm still in it. I'm not coming out of it until March. It has been an ass kicker. I got my ass handed to me. <laughs> I'm not going to talk so much about it here. I'll talk about it later. But I do need to slightly bring it up to say we, we can't ignore this opposing house and, and what's going on. Because that's going to really indicate how difficult this transit will or won't be for you. I think another thing is your temperament in general. I mean, some people are probably, they've got the energetic signature where they can walk off challenges a little bit easier than others. I'm not one of those people. I might sound like I'm whining, okay? And definitely my family during this time viewed me as whining. And, you know, we can blame that on my Pisces stellium. <laughs> I really feel things, okay? With my moon, Venus, Jupiter, Black Moon Lilith in Pisces. I really feel things. And so again, if you have a different temperament, a different energetic signature, it might not hit you so hard. So I don't want you to uh, get a afraid, um, but this is definitely not, not a fantastic story, okay? And hopefully by the end of it, we will talk about lessons I learned and positive takeaways from this transit. So what is Black Moon Lilith? Black Moon Lilith is, you know, we're not talking about a planet. We're not talking about an asteroid. We're talking about the dark side of the moon, the shadow of it, basically. And, you know, for that reason, I think, again, coming into this transit, I was not really given a lot of weight. I'm like, man, eh, you know, people might get a little cranky because, you know, she's known as the bad bitch <laughs> of astrology. Like, you know, if I'm doing private readings for a client and I'm trying to figure out, you know, what's likely going to put my client in bitch mode this year or in what area of life are they likely to encounter people in bitch mode this year? I'm going to look at what house uh you know black moon lilith is transiting and i'm also going to look at the sign because that's going to tell me the flavor of what is this okay so for me it, you know transiting the fourth house there was a lot of bitch mode energy going on with family members and i know some of you are nice sweet little delicate flowers and you're like but i would never well you're going to encounter it. You know, there are people who would always, okay, in this world. So buckle up, get ready, because you're going to probably, even if you are the most sweetest soul, you are going to deal with arguably some vile outbursts out of people, family members. And again, the severity of this, the arguments, the disagreements, 
uh, this kind of rebellious type of energy. It, it just really depends. And for me, coming into this transit, it was in Cancer. So again, a lot more about family energy. Can cancer is like the mother of the zodiac and trying to protect and nurture and nourish. And it's highly sensitive about, I'm trying to protect my emotional sensibilities, my sense of belonging and getting angry uh, and maybe even frustrated. But again, uh, maybe not even coming across necessarily bitchy, but uh, people maybe look at you like, well, you know, you're asserting your needs and stop complaining and stop bitching. Stop your bitching and, and complaining type stuff, you know? Toward the end of the transit, it went into Leo where it got very vociferous <laughs> and very, what about me? Okay. So a couple things I want to say about that. Um, I'm going to talk more about this Leo energy toward the end. Okay. Because it ties into generational issues. Black Moon Lilith is the bad bitch in the zodiac usually she will transit a sign every nine months so it's, it's it's bringing up this kind of rebellious feminine energy and interestingly that nine month is somewhat similar right to gestational cycle something i want to say about this fourth house is that yes fourth house has to do with home family sense of belonging but for some of you, because you're, when you get into the fourth house, you're coming into, you're coming out of a third house transit of this. And when you're done with that fourth house transit, you're going into fifth house. So some of you that are belly aching in this fourth house transit about family issues, I'm sorry to say, it's not going to be just a nine month, right? I know I just said the transit's nine months per sign and, you know. But unfortunately, going through the third house can bring up issues with siblings. And I don't really have any siblings. I mean, I do, but I don't. Like, I have step-siblings that don't really treat me like family. <laughs> so it's like I don't have siblings, okay? Okay. <laughs> But I do have children that are siblings, and so there were things that came up amongst them during that transit. And when I came into that this fourth house transit, I was bringing those issues in with issues among my children, okay? So then when we get solidly in fourth house, oh, you better believe there's issues with your family, but yeah, maybe even housing, um not feeling like you belong, sensitivities going on in the, in the household or where you reside. Fourth house is very, very private. And then once you get into fifth house, this can also bring up issues, again, with a bit of a family vibe of your children, your childhood. So we're looking at if we combine these three houses, we're looking at roughly two and a half years where you could be dealing with family issues. So I want to say to you, yes, those of you going through this transit in the fourth house, you're thinking, eh, you know, it's nine months, you know, and that's, again, that's this is something that I do with myself. If I'm going through a difficult transit, I just try to tell myself, Stephanie, it's just, it's an energy, it'll pass. In this case, nine months, you'll be in, you'll be out. But unfortunately, if during this transit, you had family issues really rearing their ugly faces at you, <laughs> then this could be something that it has been going on and, and will not go away for at least two and a half years. I'm sorry to say you got to buckle up. And I'm telling myself that. Because as I'm coming out of this fourth house transit, I'm going into fifth house. So I know I'm not entirely free and clear. I, I've i got some more work to do with healing my childhood issues and issues with my children. And on a more personal individual level, dealing with housing issues that have been upside down and not feeling that I belong anywhere to anyone or anything which for me has been exceptionally painful. Like I can't even articulate. It's, I try to explain to some people and I don't think that they get it at all.
So for yourself, I would encourage you to start off looking at what's going on in that fourth house. And that's in your natal chart. Like, what did you come into this life dealing with uh, energetically? And then look at the transits, obviously, in addition to this one. Are there any other transits you're going through that are quite significant with major planets like Saturn? I mean, Saturn, I, I mentioned Saturn, uh, Mars, Pluto. Those are malefics, okay? But maybe there's uh, Jupiter in there, which can be benefic, but it can also really enlarge issues and make them bigger than... It's like Jupiter will put these issues under a magnifying lens where you just can't avoid it. And so you've got to look at what's going on in that fourth house. For me, I have a void fourth house, meaning that I've got nothing in there in my natal chart. And I got a lot going on <laughs> in the opposing house natally and with current transits, okay? So again, you know, that's something to consider. But if you're like me and you have really nothing in your natal fourth house, it's void. You need to also definitely look at the sign in that fourth house. For me, it's Leo. And that is going to tell you how you individually relate to home, family, sense of belonging. What is your sense of foundation? And so for me, like, void house is like, there never has been. There never, I've never felt like I belonged. And that's probably why this is so freaking triggering to me, because... I have been trying to create this my entire life and it evades me. And with a Leo energy in that fourth house, right, that kind of sets the tone with that, that energy. And so it has brought up a lot of issues in the family where ego is coming into play. It's a lot of what about me energy. And there have been issues in the family with disloyalty. It's a real problem, and during this transit, I started doing a lot of um, healing. As my north node was also transiting my 12th house, I felt led to start really healing these past issues and, you know, on an emotional, spiritual level, and I started um, getting into healing, looking into healing generational trauma and looking at generational karma. And by the way, Till Swan has an excellent... Um, video available and I think she also has a teaching series on it as well so if you're interested in that maybe go check out that and I'm not being paid to or asked to say anything I'm legitimately saying look into that it helped me I was looking into it you know over the last summer that I've been doing a lot of healing work on this issue but I started realizing uh, this is something that I was kind of born into where you know you don't really feel like you have a solid foundation you don't have a sense of belonging because everybody's out for themselves and I started looking back at generationally, there's about four or five generations that I'm aware of within my family on both sides, where there has been a pattern of estrangement, where people do not know how to look out for other people's needs as much as they do their own. There's a lot of zero sum games that have been played in the family of I will win, I will get my way at any cost. And if that means that I have to betray you, I have to be disloyal to you, then that's what I'm going to do. And and then that puts the other family members in a position where in order to remain in that relationship, you almost have to go along with betraying yourself because it's a whole zero sum game with these people. And so then what people do is they just Say, so, you know what, if being in a relationship means I have to betray myself or go along with your betrayal, go along with your disloyalty, then I'm not going to do it. So you have like four or five generations of people who just, I'm sorry, there's a generational issue with disloyalty and I am not trying to like shit on anybody. I think all families have problems. Everybody's got their own generational karma and trauma that they're born into and I have recognized it's mine. And honestly, whether or not you have Leo in your fourth house, you probably don't. Uh, nevertheless, I think we collectively are dealing with these issues. You have so much estrangement. We're dealing with a loneliness epidemic. There's more people now than ever living alone. 
or you see all the people that are homeless out on the streets, where are their families? This is because of the breakdown of the nuclear family. And I'll talk more about this when I get into, you know, talking 10th house stuff because people, especially in modern American culture, we have been coming off of how many decades, generations of anti-natalism, people who have been aborting their legacy aborting their god-given support system right i'm a gen xer i'm part of the lost generation that was large-scale aborted um and then many of us who made it out of the womb alive i mean our parents didn't our parents treated us like a a chore a responsibility a task to check off their list we were accessories in their lives by the way there are the boomers my parents generation they are the leo uh, the Pluto and Leo generation. So again, I'm, I'm coming up to this ego issue and these loyalty issues, whether or not you have Leo in your fourth house, I think collectively this is relevant because whether you're a boomer or you were raised by boomer or in some way you're impacted by boomers, Leo, Pluto and Leo generation is got loyalty issues. See, they thought that loyalty in the family was going to come auto magically. That it was just automatic because you know i'm the elder so of course you're going to come over for christmas and holidays i mean it doesn't matter that they had a bunch of latchkey kids and disposable marriages like they actually thought that they were going to have lives like that where they lived for themselves and everybody was just going to roll out the red carpet and now a lot of them are in their elder years retirement years and they're wondering why their holidays and why their homes are looking like who did it why and how come because loyalty is not automatic. Loyalty is not commanded, it's earned. And this is a lesson I think that my generation has learned the hard way, painfully, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but the following generations after, you know, they're different Pluto generations, right? Um, I'm Pluto and Libra. Uh, all the Gen Xers are Pluto and Libra. So we've changed the way we do relationships. We understand that there's give and take. There's back and forth. There's two parties involved here. Like, you you know, you, you have to have some discretion and some dis diplomacy and try to weigh things out and realize there are consequences, right? We get it. However, the following generations after us, like, right, my kids' generation, whether you're talking millennials or, or Zoomers, but more Zoomers than millennials, you're looking at these generations where... I don't want to get too long-winded in this. If y'all want to hear me talk more about generational astrology, because I studied it this summer as I was healing these family issues. But these following generations, they their way of identifying family is based on who is in alignment with my sensitivities. Who is in alignment with my belief system, right? Pluto and Sagittarius, Pluto and Scorpio. So if you're not affirming their belief system or their feelings, out you go, out you go. So it's rough. It's rough. So I already talked a good bit about 10th house, the supposing house, which is the contrast there of your public life, whereas fourth house is your private life. Um, and looking at what's going on over there because that's probably going to show where you're getting some pushback or challenge or adversity and hopefully you're not like me and dealing with a serious malefic like who's going to fight saturn <laughs> and, and i'll tell you it was brutal because my natal sun and mercury and midheaven is over there right so in aquarius so i could say so much about that like I said, I'll save it for later, but it, it really got to the core of me, right? Because your sun sign is y your your core self. You know, that's your energy. And um, and this, for Saturn to be in this house at that time, um, this is a karmic issue. So again, bringing up karmic family issues and what I'm doing, my legacy, legacy. And because I was dealing with so much restriction and constriction having to do with my own vitality, my status, my career, my business, 
I suddenly became aware through this transit how important family is. Like this modern day American culture puts so much emphasis on go to school, get a good job, at least it has been, right? That's kind of falling by the wayside because of what I'm, stuff I'm about to say, <laughs> you know, but for even women, you know, women have really been encouraged to even forego motherhood and marriage to just, and, and, and even right now, this whole dinks movement, dual income, no kids. These people in their 20s are going on there bragging about how they're dinks and it's so damn great. Well, you know what? That might look cute in your 20s, but try it on for size at my age, okay? Because I know a lot of women who took that path in life and they said it's the worst decision they ever made. They know they're going to die alone. And and I, I mean, I know several women, all right? And I've said this before in my videos, but my God, I became aware of it. Because let me tell you something. As Saturn was going through this 10th house, I came to the realization that sometimes you can work your ass off. You can build a successful business. You can get that degree or the certifications or those whatever qualifications, letters of recommendation. You can do all this stuff with your career and you can build status. Like I had stockpile, I had, you know, everything. You could be sitting pretty. But if it all goes to shit, if you lose your job, if you, you know, somebody makes a decision that badly impacts your business that just crashes it overnight where are you gonna go oh you're gonna run to the government welcome to 2023 where you really can't do that anymore because the government's jacked up you know so and, and again 10th house it, it could also you know bring up issues with the authorities um with people in government it can also side note bring up issues with paternal issues, mother, father, right? With with the 10th house being more of a paternal, authoritarian, disciplinarian type of energy. Um, but my point is that you think you're going to rely on your job, your career, your education, your status. And when that goes to shit, what you think you're going to depend on what? The government? The social insecurity system? <laughs> No, you need family. You need family. And it's not a popular message, but it's the truth that nobody is talking about and they're learning about the very hard way. Again, look at all these homeless people. Where are their families? This is the breakdown of the family, breakdown of the nuclear family. And you know, I put out some videos this summer about this when I was heavy into this. Like I got this revelation of how important family is. Yes, it's important that you do something meaningful with your life. I'm a 10th houser, sun in Aquarius in the 10th house. I'm not going to tell you to have a meaningless life. Just be all about your family. But you've got to understand that family has its rightful role in your life. It needs to be prioritized. Because at some point, if not in your 20s, maybe in your 40s, 50s, whenever, at some point in your life, you're going to need family to fall back on. And if you don't, your ass is going to be out in the streets or pitch in a tent in a forest somewhere. And I learned that the hard way. So as I came into more of an understanding of the importance of family and the generational karma that I was born into that I needed to face, I began realizing that I was being tasked with a very difficult lesson. How are we loyal to people who are not loyal to us? How? How do we integrate people into our lives, their lessons with ours? How do we do this when everything in your life is telling you to reject and abandon? And maybe that's all you have known for not only just your entire life, but your genetic memories, your epigenetics. That's all it knows going back four or five generations. We do not know. This family does not know how to put self aside 
in the interest of the group. They don't. And I'm going to tell you that <clears throat> coming out of this transit, I still don't have this figured out. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> But, you know, I'm also dealing with my Chiron return right now. So maybe, maybe after I come out of that transit, I'll have something more enlightening to say. I'm still on that journey. I'm still struggling with that. But I have been doing a lot of personal healing work. I think for me, the healing has started within to deal with the rep repressed, unreleased trauma. And I'm going to give you a story of also the healing that has gone on for me contrasting you know the beginning of the fourth house to the end of the fourth house a very interesting story where there was some healing in, in a relationship um, with family members and basically I had a situation coming into this transit um, actually it started in Leo yeah um, very egocentric what about me what about me you know nastiness um, bitchiness I had a situation where um, I had just like spent a lot of money financing a move. I had mm, invested in making a major change with my life that I had wanted for a long time. And I, I was dealing with a lot of adversity because of Saturn going through that 10th house. And so I was, I was dealing with um, cash flow issues. And I had uh, my, my phone charger broke on me, uh, which is like a $10, $15 expense to just go get another one. But, you know, because I was being like so miserly with my money and really trying to be responsible and I just really bit off more than I could chew. I was like, you know, um, I asked a family member, hey, can I, can I borrow, you know, your phone charger? And um, they're like, yeah, sure, you know, and uh, I guess I borrowed it for too long. Um, or I wanted to borrow it again, and they they were tired of loaning it out to me, and so I got this vicious, like, I couldn't believe, like, I was stunned the reaction I got, and I think the one thing that stunned me so much is within myself, I was like, well, I'm just asking you to share something, like, do I not share with you, and I even said that to this person, I try to stand up for myself, you know, and say, well, well, why are you coming at me with this attitude? Do I not share with you? And the response was even more shocking. It was like, oh, you shouldn't have shared that. You should have just given it all to me. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up and wait a second. I have given to my own detriment. I have given above and beyond what anyone in my situation could have or would have given. If I would have given you this thing, and I tried, but if I would have, my God, I'd have nothing right now. Nothing. And the vitriol, the anger. And I even went to other family members to try to, I don't know, get them to reason. And they came back at me too, and I got this uh, attitude of, I mean, it, it, they dug their heels in. They were like, well, why do you have to borrow a phone charger? Why can't you get your own? And I'm like, well, I'm just kind of going through a rough spot right now. And I just thought, well, you know, they're here and they've got one and, you know, I'm going to keep working and, and it just makes it, you know, I, again, I didn't think it was such a big deal that I borrowed a phone charger that cost maybe 10, 15 bucks, you know, um, but they use this as a thing to say, well, you know, you should get your own phone charger. Why can't you get your own? You should get a better job. And that's when they start bringing up stuff about, you know, my income. And now it was just like, oh my God, you know, because my business was struggling. And I mean, my business had been reasonably successful. I had been making a livable income for like two, two and a half years. And then this transit, and then it meant so much to me as, you know, like, oh my God, put a dagger through my heart. But so anyway, I was stunned and shocked and speechless. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> So I don't know why, but that situation left such an impression upon me that people would be so nasty about me asking to borrow something that costs ten, fifteen dollars. I, I, to this day, I'm like, <laughs> but that's Black Moon Lilith in fourth house, right? Opposing Saturn. Okay, I got other stuff going on, but yeah, it's bad. <laughs> Keep it all into perspective. I'm not saying it's going to happen to you, but. 
all things considered in my chart. Oh my God. Oh my God. So fast forward to the end of this transit that I'm coming out of. I recently had a situation with another family member where oddly my phone charger went bad again. And I was kind of going through a little bit of a tight spot. Again, still Saturn in the 10th house probs. And I asked, hey, can I borrow your charger? And this family member was like, yeah, sure, you can have it. I mean, it's only like $10, $15. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying everything is perfect, okay? Right? Is not. I got a lot of work ahead of me because this Black Moon Low is going into the fifth house having to do with my kids. So, you know, we're looking at a, yet another nine months of working on these issues. Uh, pretty much all of 2024. But my point is, notice the contrast of why can't you afford your own? Get a job and sure you can have it. I mean, it's only like 10, 15 bucks and I've got others. Night and day. And it made me think to myself, wow, what's going on here? I'm the same person. And you put the same circumstance around different people at different times, you're going to get a different reaction. Because maybe, maybe it's not about money. Maybe it's not about your status or the limitations that you're operating within. Maybe it actually has nothing to do with you. It has to do with the dark shadow side of people coming out. Like the reality is that this reaction that I got from family members was not about a phone charger. It was that they were frustrated at me about my limitations imposing limitations upon them. It's not very compassionate, now is it? And I remember during this time when I started really experiencing this drama, which you could say is Black Moon Lilith and Leo, drama that shocked me. I remember at that time being so taken aback by it, like it was foreign, like where did this come from? Like, why well, don't I understand why you're angry at me? This doesn't make any sense. And then I, over time, began pulling back. Um, side note, then uh, toward the end of this transit, it moves into Virgo, right? So I become a lot more withdrawn and reserved and discerning and analyzing about what is this toxicity here and how do I heal it, you know? And I wasn't lashing out or getting defensive. I was kind of puzzled and perplexed, like, what in the beep is this? I kept noticing a, a pattern of resentment and mistrust. Like I was really tuning into the anger and trying to figure out, but why? Why are you angry at me? What did I do to you? And I was picking up energetically that they were resentful and that they didn't trust me. And I would ask them, listen, I, I notice this keeps coming up. I keep feeling like, have I, you know, you don't trust me or you, you're resenting something about me. Like, have I done something to you that would cause you to not trust me? Like, why, why are you acting like you resent me? Like, what have I done to you? I mean, is there something that I need to do here? Do we need to talk about this? And I would get this kind of generally a blank vacant, I don't know what. And for the longest time, I just didn't understand it because I, I was not getting the answers. But I will tell you coming out of this transit, I'm now understanding that there was a lot of projection going on. The mistrust that I was picking up on was they didn't feel secure. And I wasn't giving them security because I didn't have it to give Saturn in the 10th void fourth house 
and I was asking them to step up and provide some type of security or support, which is making them feel insecure. So I was revealing their own support, lack of support issues, lack of security issues, and they resented it. So this could bring up the shadow, not just in yourself, but yes, in other people. Try to be aware of that as people are spewing vileness out of their mouths. Try to see beyond it. And it might be hard because you might be in so much of the thick of it, which I was for so long. It, I mean, it's I didn't really even figure this out and connect these dots until recently. Like, oh, that was what was going on. That's why I was getting treated because I was so bewildered in the moment and even after for the longest time. I've had to do a lot of healing within myself because, right, this dark shadow stuff that comes out of people, you, you know, you, you can't heal people. Like, they, they have to do their healing work. So there needs to be, I think, some discernment and not personalizing and taking that on so much as your own issues. Although, yes, it did absolutely affect me on a profoundly personal level. I had to recognize what is my issue to heal and what is not. And for me, you know, I started looking at my own issues with lack of support and I had some physical issues that were come that came up during this transit, lower back pain. Like if you look at the emotional body, which I've talked about on my channel, I put out a video a while back about the emotional body and I had like a lot of lower back pain. And if you look at that region on the emotional body map, it indicates somebody who's got lack of support issues. They're pissed off at life, <laughs> which I most certainly was. You know, and then you go back to the astrology and you, you know, looking at, okay, void, like I said, void fourth house in my natal chart. There's no, no, no foundation there. There's, it's like nothing. Okay. And my cancer placement, I have my natal Saturn in cancer. So there's been restriction my whole life on these kind of maternal home nurturing, nourishing issues, like a lot of heavy karma around that at a time when Saturn is transiting it's triggering a lot of the, the the karma in my natal chart, right? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So it starts coming up in my body, my, uh, you know, if you believe in this psychosomatic mind, body, spirit connection, um, then I think you'll follow my train of thought. I started looking at why can't I deal with this back issue because I was wearing a back brace for the longest time and I was even struggling to get consistent um, chiropractic care like I could get one visit in here or one visit in there um, but it took me toward the end of this transit to actually get all the the adjustments I needed but then even when my back was straightened out I was still in pain and my chiropractor's like well you, you probably are still dealing with pain because you were in the pain for so long without the proper adjustments that now your muscle has formed a muscle memory to be in that maladjustment. Anyway, so I've been working, I've been doing stretches. I was learning about um, different exercises to help release emotional trauma in your root base sacral chakras. I actually started doing that this summer. I mean, it. it I don't. I don't think it's a cure all, but every little bit of self care counts. And currently right now I'm doing like a liver and kidney cleanse because I've been wondering if my liver and kidneys are a bit damaged. And again, going back to the mind-body-spirit connection, there are people out there that believe that anger weakens the liver and fear weakens the kidneys. And so I'm just trying to work on that because I feel like it got, it got triggered during this time. And... Um, I've been looking also at videos on how to release anger, which is like these sitting exercises where you just like do these growling and you just kind of, you know, like there's some videos online about how to do that um, to really like vocalize it and get it out of your system because we are storing trauma in our bodies that is unprocessed because society has told us to behave ourselves and that anger doesn't have its time and place. And it actually does. There's such a thing as holy righteous anger, like being angry and grieving over the lack of support issues and the, the disloyalty and all of that. And, and then, yeah, you know, that's my cross to bear in life, I suppose. And I'll try to do my best that I can within my family. But my God, in the meantime, I've got to try to, to heal and release all of this stored trauma that I've taken on physically 
Anger is basically a, an emotion that we experience when we feel a sense of powerlessness. And we sense that something is unworkable, that is very important to us or that we are trying to achieve success with. We are in an unworkable situation where we feel powerless to gain any success with. And so I'm going to tie this all the way back to, you know, the beginning, Black Moon Lilith transiting fourth house. What are you angry about? What do you need to process in terms of home, family, sense of belonging? How do you heal that within yourself emotionally, physically? Because I think the, the highest use of this energy is to work on, you know, healing, unresolved trauma and wounds having to do with lack of belonging, lack of support, and generational trauma. Deep stuff, but I hope it helps somebody out there. And when I finish up my next transit, I'll post about that. Thanks for watching. Be blessed.